They're Mr. Beads. And that the Mr. Beads are in a what kind of detector? Thermal conductivity detector. Thermal, which means heat, temperature, yes, thermal. Conductivity. Conductivity. How conductive is something? What wire do meth heads steal and go sell it for meth? Copper. copper. Why copper? Why do we use copper for electricity? Highly conductive, very conductive metal. Super great for doing what we're wanting to do in transferring electricity. Conductivity is how well we are going to carry our amperage, shall we say. All right. Now, thermal conductivity, and of course, the last part, detector. Everything that ends in a D is going to be detector. FID, flame ionization, detector. Thermal conductivity, detector. Uh, FPD, flame photometric, detector. D is always detector. I've had that on tests and people will give me the craziest answers for D. I don't even understand it. These suckers that we pulled out and seen how tiny they are. These are our little thermistor beads. This is in an old advanced optochrome, but the same thing applies. Nowadays, you have four beads. You have an R, which stands for reference. reference. If this guy goes out, everybody goes out. Because everybody is comparing themselves to reference. Each one of our beads is going to be bead number one, bead number two, bead number three, and then our reference bead. What ohm value in a maximum two are these beads? 30K. 30K, 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 30K. This guy is only going to see what for its entire life? Carrier. It will never see anything except for carrier. Carrier, 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 carrier going across it. We are sitting in an oven. Most typical oven temperatures are 60. 60C, which is equal to 140F. 60C, 140F. Now, as we warm our oven up, these 30Ks are going to gain resistance or lose resistance as we heat their butts up. Loose. You will lose resistance as you heat stuff up. In the summertime, stuff moves faster. In the wintertime, things move a whole lot slower. You freeze water, it actually becomes a solid. It gets so slow, it becomes a solid. You heat it up, it becomes a gas. It's really hauling butt. Molecules are moving all over the place when you heat it up. Now, as we heat up these guys, they lose resistance. Things start flowing through them a whole lot easier. So we start off 30K, 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 30K. Put them in a 140 degree oven. Temperature is going to make the resistance drop. Temperature is going to make the resistance drop. And I went and did a little measuring, and we're going to do it again. But they actually ended up being... 8.26, 8 8.5, 8.54, 8.47. K. K ohms. 8,000 ohms. 8,260 ohms. 8,500 ohms. 8,540 ohms. 8,470 ohms. All right there. Nice and even for the most part. The 
Gestapo. Making sure we have masks on. Okay. Cute. Now, as we are bringing our carrier in and going across these guys, that's what own value they're going to be sitting at. They all have carrier going across them right now, but the analyzer is in hold. Whenever we bring, so we got carrier coming across. We're going to inject from a valve. As carrier brings components across the thermistor bead, we're going to heat it up even more. We're actually cooling it down with our carrier gas. Two most common carrier gases, helium, hydrogen, for looking at 90% of the components in the world. But if we're looking for a hydrogen peak, what carrier will we use? Nitrogen, nitrogen carrier for a hydrogen peak because their thermal capacitance is so vastly different. Hydrogen, of course, being number one on the periodic table is the most different from everybody else with helium following a very close second. Now, hydrogen's flowing, hydrogen's flowing, hydrogen's flowing. We're comparing this guy to this guy and that's giving us our baseline of zero. As a component will come up and go across this bead, we're gonna heat it up. We're gonna heat that bead up, and when you heat the bead up, it loses even more resistance, all right? Now, if everybody understands how instruments work, transmitters, they are basically variable resistors out in the plant. You get your four to 20 milliamps, zero to 100% from varying your resistance in the transmitter, and that gives you your zero to 100% to the DCS. So you basically have a supply voltage, a constant supply voltage. And then that's gonna be read as basically an amp per edge reading, tiny, tiny piquito amount. And as our bead gets heated up, it's going to lose resistance, which will increase amp flow, increase it through because we're losing resistance. And that difference between you and you gives us our peaks. Okay? And that is what we are watching on these beads for the chromatogram to get the guys. As our peaks come through, they're going to be the same size every time because the GC is built on constants. So we are going to have the same size sample every time. Same size sample every time. And we're going to be consistent with our cow bottle get the same size, everybody coming through, same thing, everything, constant, 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 constant. And that is how we are going to calibrate this guy. It's gonna give us an area of this peak. The area will be the same over and over and over again on that cow bottle. We will calibrate to it, give it a response factor, and then that will equal our percent or PPM out. All right, good. Let's go take a look at our GC now. One more slide real quick. I don't know what the voltage is. We're gonna go test this theory. I threw this number in here. But that is what we're gonna go check right now. I measured the ohm value. Now we're gonna go measure the voltage value. All right. Let's do it. Everybody got their mask?